All right, gotta say, diving into your world of virtual cycling this week, it's pretty awesome. Back to battling it out on the indoor trainer. But you're not just spinning your wheels, or you're, you're taking on some serious virtual climbs, crushing those races. And this week, we've got two big ones you want to unpack, the Mine 8 and, oh boy, the Out and Back again. Just the name sounds brutal. So let's bring in our expert, ready to break down the tactics of wins and, yeah, maybe some learning moments too. First up, that Mayan 8 course. I mean, that one's a beast, am I right? A real test of endurance. And you were holding the lead solo for a good chunk of it. Can't even imagine the pressure. What was the toughest part for you? The descent, huh? <laughs> yeah, always a gamble when you're out front alone and with four riders hot on your tail on that long, steep drop must have been intense. Now, what's really impressive is how strategically you rode the first part of that race. Laser focus on staying in that sweet spot zone. And for anyone listening who's new to this, that means finding that sweet spot of pushing hard, but not completely burning yourself out too early. And the data doesn't lie. Your power chart shows incredible consistency, which on a long course like the Mayan 8, that's key. It's all about pacing, finding that rhythm. But then there it is, that white knuckle descent. Knowing those other riders are gunning for you, did you manage to hold them off? Nailed it, you did. Fended them off on that Mayan 8 descent. A win's a win, right? But from one epic ride to another, that second race, the out and back again, totally different beast. This time, it was the volcano KOM that really put you to the test. Now, for anyone who isn't familiar with the lingo, KOM, that's king of the mountain, all about conquering a specific climb fastest time possible. On this one, even if it wasn't the longest climb, those gradients, brutal, must have felt like your legs were on fire. Talk about pushing your limits. And your heart rate data from this race, fascinating stuff. You were in the red zone for a good chunk of that climb, really pushing your max. Just looking at it, I can feel the burn, but it's not just physical, is it? There's that mental game too, battling through the fatigue, pushing past what you think you're capable of. How'd you wrap your head around a climb like that, the Volcano KOM? And that's where this race takes kind of a wild turn right you conquered that volcano kom but the descent well that's where things got interesting what goes up must come down but in cycling that downhill can be just as tough as the climb itself you mentioned a, a, a bit of a strategic error easing off at the top to recover and yeah those competitors they saw an opening and went for it it's amazing how those split second decisions those moments where you're balancing exhaustion with pushing even harder can make or break a race. You said it yourself. You can't afford to die off at the start of the descent. Got to use every last bit of strength. Tough lesson, but those are the ones that really stick with you. Your self-awareness, though, that's huge. Recognizing that mistake, taking the mm -hmm. time to analyze it, that's how you improve. You're not just looking at a loss. You're seeing it as a chance to grow. Exactly. And, you know, looking at the bigger picture, both these races, they highlight something so important in cycling maintaining momentum. On that Mayan 8 descent, you had to fight that urge to ease up to conserve energy. Yeah. But on the Volcano KOM, that fatigue, it led to that momentary lapse. And your competitors, they capitalized on it. Makes sense. And it makes you think, especially for, well, for us senior cyclists, how do you strike that balance? Pushing your limits, but also knowing when to conserve energy. It's a tough thing to master. Yeah, it's like walking a tightrope. It really is. Yeah. It requires a deep understanding of your body, what it can handle. And that's where experience comes in, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. Learning those little cues your body gives you, knowing when to push, when to hold back. Yeah, you're constantly adjusting your effort based yeah. on the terrain, the competition, everything. You know, one strategy that can be super effective, particularly on longer descents, is to use short, powerful bursts of speed instead of trying to maintain, you know, a super high pace the whole way down. Think of it like intervals, but downhill. Interesting. Allows you to recover a bit during those short moments of coasting, but you're still maintaining that competitive edge. And it could be especially good for us, you know, senior riders. Less strain on the joints, less stress on the cardiovascular system. So it's all about working smarter, not just harder. Exactly. Finding those little efficiencies, those micro recoveries that can make a big difference over time. Makes all the difference. And hey, even with those ups and downs, you're clearly still loving this virtual cycling thing. I mean, you described that post-race cool-down feeling like being on a cycling trip in the South. Amazing how technology can transport us like that, even stuck indoors. As you gear up for that next virtual challenge, what's the biggest thing you're taking away from these two races? What will you do differently next time? And for everyone listening, let's take this beyond cycling. Where else in life do we face those volcano KOMs, those challenges that demand everything we've got? How can we use those lessons? You know, strategic effort, managing fatigue, knowing when to recover in other parts of our lives. Something to think about as you navigate those virtual and real life terrains. 
Until next time, happy ride.